All right, welcome back to ABA Exam Review and our BCBA Task List Series. Today we're continuing with Philosophical Underpinnings and A4. Distinguish among behaviorism, experimental analysis of behavior, applied behavior analysis, and professional practice guided by the science of behavior analysis. Pretty straightforward topic, but as always, we need to know it. So we will go through each piece by piece, give a couple practice questions, and then wrap up. As always, be sure to subscribe so you get all of our updates. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. Let us know when you pass so we can include you in our Sunday shout-out. Other than that, let's work hard, study hard, get going. Okay, A4, distinguish among different areas of behavior. Uh, we are looking at four major types, okay? And this is what the task list wants us to examine. Behaviorism, EAB, experimental analysis of behavior, applied behavior analysis, and practice guided by behavior analysis. So we're going to go through each individually, but as an overview, behaviorism is kind of our overall philosophy. It's how we think about behavior. Experimental analysis of behavior is typically laboratory work, very controlled, very standardized, and often using non-human subjects. Think pigeons and mice. Applied behavior analysis, we're taking all these fundamentals of EAB, but going to human, su uh, human subjects and applied settings. So whenever you develop an intervention and you implement it with your client and take data, that's ABA, applied setting, human subject, and then practice guided by behavior analysis. This is providing service to consumers. Okay. So think you teach a stakeholder to do something and they implement it. Your technicians go in and work with the client. All right. You've designed all these treatments, you're taking data, and then you teach them to the technician or the stakeholder. They implement it. They provide service. It's practice guided by BA. So we're going to go through each one individually. What domain of behavior is characterized by classifying public and private events as behavior? So when you think public and private events, we're thinking theory, right? Philosophy. And of course, we have methodological and radical. Well, we know from one of our previous videos that methodological behaviorism did not consider private events as a aspect of studyable behavior, right? Not until Skinner and radical behaviorism came around did our really philosophy and thinking change. So radical behaviorism started to classify both public and private events as behavior. ABA and experimental analysis of behavior are just our experimental procedures. These are not our guiding philosophies, okay? And that's where people get a little tripped up. But just remember, EAB and ABA, we're experimenting, we're manipulating, we're, we're looking at different change agents and things we can do to change behavior, okay? Behaviorism, we're thinking about behavior. We're philosophizing. So public and private events as behavior, that was B, radical behaviorism. So let's talk about just behaviorism. We focus on theory and philosophy. It started with Watson, okay? His stimulus, SR, or stimulus response, SR, psychology. Think the little Albert experiment, put on the bunny mask, made the loud noise, conditioned, white rabbits and masks to be very frightening for these children, right? That was SR psychology. It leaves out critical things like what if the response doesn't have a clear antecedent? And what about consequences that maintain the behavior? So later on, that was built upon to methodological behaviorism, very similar to radical behaviorism, except what? Well, private events are now within the realm of science, a extremely important part of what separates methodological and radical behaviors. So Skinner came along and designed or, you know, theorized radical behaviorism and said, you know what? We can't ignore private events. Okay. Thoughts and feelings might not be observable, might not be measurable, might not be the best things to target um, in practice, but we can still consider them as behavior. They're still affected by our behavioral principles. Question What did Watson's theory not account for? A, behavior without a clear antecedent. Yeah, the stimulus response theory or philosophy relies on a clear antecedent. If you can't distinguish the clear antecedent, this stimulus response idea kind of falls apart. The thing about operant behavior, and, and we don't need a clear antecedent, right? Because we're worried about the response and we're worried about that maintaining consequence. B, the effect of consequences. You can see this is just a two-term contingency, right? SR. So we're not really looking so much at these maintaining consequences. It's really stimulus response, okay? Remember, our other three-term is S-R-S, -S, okay? Watson's theory did not account for 
nothing without a clear antecedent, and then kind of the effects of consequences. Reactions to certain stimuli, well, of course, that will, that's what it was all about, right? You see a bunny, you do nothing. I pair that, that mask with a loud noise. Now you see a bunny, you get startled, okay? That is a reaction to a certain stimuli. So what did he not account for? Well, behavior without a clear antecedent, and really the effects of consequences. So our answer here is D, A, and B. Continuing experimental analysis of behavior from Skinner. Anytime you think E-A-B, think Skinner. All right. This is in a lab, typically non-human subjects. This controlled, orderly, reliable relationship between behavior and the environment. We know with ABA, we can't produce reliable environments, right? Because even though the universe is lawful and orderly, the environment is constantly changing. With EAB, Skinner got in there with his pigeons and his rats, and he had a Skinner box that was very controlled, right? And he started using his cumulative record. He would take rate of response on how often they responded to different manipulations. So these are kind of the, the guiding lights of EAB, right? Rate of response is the most common variable. Repeated measurements of a carefully defined response classes. So you can see how controlled these things are, right? It's very, very controlled in a very controlled environment. We're using single subject designs and we rely on visual analysis. So not too different from ABA minus the fact that ABA works with humans and applied settings. So think Skinner box, cumulative record, non-human subjects, laboratories. Question, a cumulative record data path never moves what direction? All right, cumulative record, Skinner's cumulative record never stopped doing what? Well, it never stops going up, okay? Sometimes it might do this, but it always continues upwards. It's cumulative, right? Just taking how many times something occurred over a period of time. It's always moving upward. So never moves what direction? Well, it moves up. It moves sideways, but it's never going to move down. because It's cumulative. It's just continuing to add on to how many times it happened. Applied behavior analysis. Well, this is what we're all here for, right? This is what we do, okay? It was really established in 1968 with JABA. Uh, 1959, you can go read about it in Cooper. It's kind of the first idea behind ABA, okay, with some nurses. But when JABA, the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis, started publishing empirical evidence, that's when it really kicked off what we now know as ABA. Because if we look at Bear, Wolf, and Risley, the characteristics or you know dimensions of ABA or or uh, what the guiding principles basically of ABA right um, applied analytic conceptually systematic that kind of thing that is our seminal piece in ABA okay still holds true today applied behavior analysis conducts experimentation in applied settings with human subjects and that's the key differenti differentiator right it's applied settings so I'm at a restaurant I'm at a house I'm at Target I'm at school with human subjects? How can we change their behavior in these real settings? Behavior should be socially significant and experimentation identifies what variable is responsible for behavior change. Socially significant and we're working to identify the variables responsible for behavior change. All right, JABA stands for what? And you know, you might need to know this, you might not, but for your practice, you should know what JABA is because it is our most reputable, most famous journal. It's the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis. I recommend reading it occasionally. Okay, you should be always staying up to date with the latest ABA knowledge, and Java is the place to do that. Okay, so EAB and ABA are different, right? So once we have ABA, we've done all our experimentation. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to train people in practice guided by behavior analysis. Now we're going to teach them, okay, how to implement these things. So what we do when we provide service, technicians, analysts, any other professionals who are actually providing the treatment, okay? This is practice guided by behavior analysis. So if you conduct parent training with stakeholders and teach them to implement extinction, and then they implement the procedure, what are they doing? Well, they're not doing experiments, right? Because they're implementing. Implementation is the key. Implementing is practice guided by ABA. All right. Not too difficult of a topic, but an important one, one you need to know, one you need to cover. Okay, this is one of those topics that people choose to neglect during their study, and they end up regretting it. 
we can't neglect anything. We need full fluency across the board. So don't neglect something like A4. All right. Okay. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com. Subscribe. Let us know when you pass. Work hard. Study hard. See you soon.